Amen. Amen. Our Father, we thank you for reminding us that you are the God of all power. Nothing shall be impossible with you. In our lives, in our families, in our church, nothing shall be impossible with you. The things that confront us and they appear very great, insurmountable, we know that you have the power today to overcome and we will overcome in Jesus' name. As we are going through this series on faith, we pray that you will plant that faith, working faith, dynamic faith, concrete faith, in every heart of every brother and sister, in Jesus' name. As you granted the people we're reading about to have such a mighty faith that will pull down strongholds, we are praying today you will increase our faith. You will strengthen our faith. And the faith that will make the Jericho walls before us to fall down, you grant every one of us in Jesus' name. We pray that you will quicken our faith even tonight and make our faith to work and help us to be able to help other people by faith as well. That as you lift us up, you help us to lift others up in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're still continuing with our story, studies on faith. And uh, we're coming to some very significant studies in Hebrews chapter 11. Actually, this period is going to be very busy for the church nationwide and for me in particular. We are planning to have a national workers retreat as uh, workers already know. And as I look at the things ahead of me, that is the series of things I need to do. The natural thing for me to do would have been to tell you that uh, we will stop here today and then when I finish the retreats, I will get you back uh, to the series of studies. But as I studied the verses following after today's study, Verse 32, if you look at that yourself, you will see there is a lot in that verse 32 alone. And I look at the other verses as well. I felt that it will not help you spiritually if we stop now and then I'll pick it up a number of weeks after. That that is uh, going to have a break in the development of your faith. And so I want to continue and I want to be able to study and dig deep into those verses so I'm appealing to you, as I'm willing to sacrifice and put in a lot of study and continuing the Monday Bible study, even with all the busy schedule, I appeal to you to please be available yourself and let us uh, dig into the Word of God and plunge into a kind of river that is uh, very, very deep. When you come next Monday, you will see what I'm talking about. I hope you'll be here. And uh, while you are coming, get ready that God is going to do something mighty in your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
ipe awon ara manda awon ko se mo ni ko wa ninu awon ise yi ti o ni dara pe ki a pada nu re iye ni pe nigbati a ba da drone ese ti a fe keko loni idi ni ti won fi pe gbogbo akoko sile lati fi ara awon ru bo nipa pe ki won le ko wa ni gbogbo awon nkan to ye ki a mo ni ese ti o tele ti a fe keko ninu re loni ati ese to tu tele yen idi ni ti o fi je pe gbogbo wa lapapo lati sa gbogbo ipa wa lati ri pe ni ojo aye to nbo awa awa nikan si kon la ma wa o tun mu awon elunu e wa ki o ba le je pe agba agba ibuku ti olorun fe fi fun wa ninu eko yi ki o ba le je pe wa loruko jesus today we looking at how people that went before us how they pull down the strongholds by faith loni a fe wo bi awon eni ti o ti re koja ni igba ti won ni igba lai lai bi o se wo ibi giga pale ni and how we too by the grace of god with the faith that he plants within us can pull down all the strongholds of the devil of the enemy before us ati papa bi a wa pe lu gege bi igbagbo ti olorun ti fi nko wa ninu oro re bi a wa pelu yo se wo ibi giga ti o ta ti gbe kai waju enikan we looking at just two verses today ese meji pere la ma wo ni o ni verse start and touch one iye ni ese ogbon ati ese iko kan le lo by face the walls of jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days ni pa igbagbo ni awon odi jericho wo lule leyin igba ti aye won ka ni ijo meje by faith the hallo tree had perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace ni pa igbagbo ni rabu pa saga ko se gbe pelu awon ti ko gboran ni gba ti o tewo gba awon ami ni alaafia last week we stopped at verse 29 ni ose to ko ja ese iko kan de logo lati duro do you realize that be Between verse 29 and verse 30, we have 40 years. In your wajamo, if we la re se iko kan de logo, ti si ti exe logo, ogoji odulo mbela re meje. Because in verse 29, where by faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do, what drown? So if we la se iko kan de logo, la ti ka if we ni pa iba goni one la oku kupa koja bi ni pe ni ya be le. After that, they started the wilderness journey. Eh, le ye le ni wa be re ye ya joti. And many many things happened during that wilderness journey. Opolopo nkan lo sisele ni akoko irin ajo nu ajiju. And there were many miracles that took place. Opolopo ise iya ni lo sele pelu. And during the time of the wilderness journey. Iyan ni akoko irin ajo ninu ajiju. You will remember that bitter water was made sweet. O ran ti pe omi ti o koro la so dididun. You will remember that the ant manna from heaven. O ran ti pe Olorun rojo manna fun wa lati oro. And quail said that his flesh was given to them supernaturally to be able to eat. Ba ka so na ni Olorun ni pagbara wa mo di re di re o pe se aparo ko la ni miraculously came out of the road be si ni amu omi jade lati nu apata you will remember the amalekites were defeated o ran ti isubu awon ara amaleki all that happened by the power of god e gbogbo awon nkan won sele ni pagbara olorun all that happened by faith gbogbo re si sele ni pa igbagbo but you realize there is a difference between the kind of faith manifested at that time and the kind of faith we are studying about today sugbon o wa mo pe iya to nbe larin iru igbagbo ti a fi si oju se उंटेन Rod with all and Aaron on either side, and with Joshua fighting on the battlefield, the faithful few believing on the Lord, but the majority of Israelites were unbelieving. Oh my God, I shall go and war a Malachi. Ni tori Moses kato wa loyo ke tonti o pa lo roti ona soke ni owo re. But we are our Uri at Aaroni. Ni ba ti Joshua si kodui jasi a war a Malachi na awo ya di a ba. Time of the wilderness journey. Ni bo gua koko ni a joni no a joni. There was a manifestation of unbelief in the heart of the majority of the Israelites. If I ran a bag bawa ni no ko lo ko kan wa Israeli. In fact, we are told in Hebrews chapter three. At le sofu ani no ebe rori keta. In verse seventeen. Ni ese For with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Awata niosi binusi fu ogoji odu. 
In verse 19, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. And in talking about the heroes of faith and the events of faith and the mighty things that happen to encourage our faith, we jumped over the wilderness journey and it came right into the land of Canaan. You see many things in our lives. The things that are not of faith do not get into the record of God. Years upon belief are wasted years. Years of murmuring, years of criticism, years of fault finding. Yes, although miracles may be happening, but they happen through the faith of other people, through the faith of Moses, but not through the faith of the congregation. It's like a wasted period, and it doesn't get into the record of the law. Now Moses himself, he had gone away. The Lord had taken him to heaven. And now we have a new leader, Joshua. Leading the people of God. And the moment Joshua took over, he was confronted by something remarkable. There was river Jordan before him. But we thank God because Joshua was believing. And, it, and the children of Israel as a whole they were believing as well and so they overcame that obstacle and river Jordan was divided and they passed over and as they were about to enter the land of promise there was a Jericho before them strong walls before them you learn the lesson from there after you have gone out of the wilderness and you have even gone through the water of baptism and the Lord has brought you into Christ and through Christ and the promises of God have stretched before you and you want to enter into the land of promise you confront a Jericho where there are strong walls and high walls and thick walls and the Lord is waiting for you on the other side of Jericho for you to possess the promises of the Lord. But there is a stronghold of the devil wanting to hinder you to enter in. But you will enter in. Satan will fail. The walls of Jericho will fall. That land of promise, your feet will step on the land of promise. And that's what we're looking at today. How the people of God conquered Jericho and they entered into the land of promise. And how Rahab in that same Jericho was saved and her family was saved. And we're told that these things happened by faith. In Bastachi, the walls, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. In Bastachi, one by faith, had they had not uh, Rahab perish not. We're considering three points today. Number one, conquering by faith. Number two, the confession of faith. Number three, the characteristics of faith. What we mean by those characteristics of faith is that after looking at verse 30 and looking at verse 31, we'll go back to those two verses together and bring out some characteristics that are hidden in those two verses of scripture. Point number one, conquering by faith. It says by faith the walls of Jericho fell down. 
when they were compassed about seven days. Now you see Jericho was a formidable kind of difficulty, a terrible obstacle before the children of Israel. It was the leading stronghold of the enemy. If the children of Israel were going to enter into the land of promise, there was only one way Jericho must fall. And to the people that were walking by sight, the city was impregnable. But faith laughs at impossibilities and it says it shall be done. The New Testament tells us there are strongholds before us. But thank God we are not the first people to be confronted by strongholds. As the people that went before us overcame, we are going to overcome in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations and every high scene that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now you can see the description of the stronghold here. We are told that this is very strong and it's a stronghold where the devil will be hiding and where he will not allow you, he will not want to allow you to pass through and get into the thing that the Lord has promised you. And then we are also told that they are very high things, exalting themselves against the knowledge of the Lord. It is still the description of the stronghold. It is so high, it is so thick, it is so great, it will try to impede, it will try to hinder, so that you will not be able to get to where you ought to get to. This is the description that the spies gave when they came back after spying the land of Canaan. And what they said about all those cities applied as well to the city of Jericho. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 28. They said, Whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying, The people is greater and taller than we and the cities are great and walled up to heaven and moreover we have seen the sons of the Anakims there that was the description the spies gave when they came back. But as they approached Jericho, the Lord gave them instruction. As you appear before your problem, as you consider the strongholds before you, the Lord will give you instruction as to how to cross over. But here is where we need to learn from Joshua and the uh, Israelites. How we will go against a stronghold? Who will go against a place like Jericho? The, the soldiers there were well trained and they were well armed. The walls were very thick and the walls were very high. 
Lord. Historians have told us that the walls were so thick that two chariots could be going on those walls on top of the walls side by side. It was so wide. And so if human beings were to advise Joshua and the children of Israel, what would have, what would they have told them? They might have told them to raise up a strong army. They might have told them to dig under the wall and let water pass by and through that space, maybe their own army could enter in. But they might have told them to begin to knock on the walls at a particular place until they can destroy that wall there and then move in. But all those methods will be the methods of the world. And those methods will never, never have war. Because they could enter, that is, the people of Jericho could climb all those walls and just drop stones on them and kill those people that are trying to destroy the wall. What instructions did not give them? When you read those instructions, they may look foolish to the unbelievers. They will look unreasonable to people that do not believe God. They look at the instruction that the Lord gave them in Joshua chapter 6. Reading from verse 3. And ye shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once, thus shall thou do six days. Unbelievers will say, what's the good in that? How do you wage war against a strong city just by walking around? And you see the things the Lord tells us, they are foolish to the people that do not believe. Walk around the city once a day, do it for six days. On the seventh day, you will go around seven times. In, in verse five. And it shall come to pass that when they, when they make a long blast with the rams on, when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all ye people shall shout with a great shout, and the walls of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. When God wants to do something by supernatural power, the instructions are simple. It's not a complicated matter at all. And it is something that everyone can do. They didn't need much education. They didn't need faith. You don't need any kind of uh, development. Only faith in God. Look at verse 12. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priest took up the ark of the Lord. And then they did what the Lord told them on the first day, they went around once. In verse 14, on the, the second day, they compassed the city once and returned into the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they, that they rose early about the dawning of the day and come past the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they come past the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time, when the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And 
In verse 20, so the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people had a shout of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and he took the city. You will see the instruction the Lord gave them, they were very simple, very straightforward. Although it appeared childish to some people, ridiculous to some people, foolish to some people. But God promised he was going to deliver Jericho into their hands if they were believed leave the Lord and obey the Lord. As he looked at the Bible, you will find that sometimes some of the instructions God has given, people who wanted something from him, those instructions appeared very foolish. You remember Naaman? He wanted to be cleansed from his leprosy. And Elisha, the prophet of God, said, You go into Jordan and dip yourself inside seven times and come out. Everything will be all right. How foolish it seemed originally to Naaman. You see, the thing the Lord is telling us is that if you just believe and you obey the Lord, your Jericho walls must fall down. You see, the thing the Lord is telling us is that if you just until there was obedience of faith. The Lord told them when to be quiet, silent. And he told them all those six days, they will just go around quietly, silently, without making any sound. To you, that may look like a simple command. But you know, the Lord was trying to cure the disease, spiritual disease, of the children of Israel because all the 40 years in the wilderness, they either were murmuring, or complaining, or talking, or finding fault or criticizing the Lord said now all right the disease of your forefathers in the wilderness is talking and talking and talking you are going to walk around the walls of Jericho once a day for six days and the test is you will not make any sound <laughs> There must be a change in your life. What had been the evidence of unbelief in the past, now that you want to believe God so that the walls of Jericho will fall down, you will not do the opposite. They were talking and talking and talking before. The Lord now said you won't go around Jericho and you'll go around in absolute quietness and silence. And then he said on the seventh day they will go around seven times. And then the walls will still be there, they must shout before the walls will fall down. You know what the Lord was teaching the children of Israel? He said in the wilderness they were always saying, the land you say you are taking us to so we have not seen anything, we left Egypt, we left all the onion, we, we left what we saw, and what you tell you say you are giving us, we have not seen at all, and God said, now new generation of the children of Israel, your fathers were looking for the resource before they will praise me, now you will praise me, and you will shout before the ones will fall down. 
iyan ni igba ti won wa nu agejo ni pe won fe ma ri ko to di pe won o le yin olorun tori pe opolopo gba ni won ma so fun mose pe e mu wa jade kuro ni ile egypt ibi ta ti gbe nje ewe beta tin gbadun e wa mu wa lo si ibi ta ti e ni da loju re sugbon olorun wa so fun won pe eyin iran tutun ni ona awon mo israel bayi e o koko yin mi logo na ko to di pe ise iya ni o sele ni obey the law won si gboro si oluwa and you will obey the law iwo na yo gboro ni oluwa every barrier between you and the promise of god all those barriers will go down gbogbo on to si je aha ma to wa laarin iwa ti ilere olorun ni gbogbo yo wo ni jericho walls will have to fall down gbogbo di jericho ni yo wo ni you will begin to believe the lord tonight you about this what that my god to obey the lord tonight go si je n to gboro si why shouldn't the jericho walls begin to fall tonight eh ki lo je ti o di jericho fi ni why shouldn't the barriers begin to be removed tonight ba wala won e di wo so ni di sanko ro la le because is why shouldn't they be parking and living your life tonight awon wahala to doju ko ye ba oni o se ni ke wo wahala le obey the lord believe the lord o meji ni oni pe ko gbara se olorun ko si gba gbo now we go to point number 2 an lo si koko keji bayi the confession of faith eleyi ni jewo igbagbo in hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 ninu eberu ori kokan lese ikokan le logbo hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 eberu ori kokan lese ikokan le logbo by faith the harlot tree had perish not with them that believe not but when she had received the spies were peace ni pa igbagbo ni rabu pa saga ko se gbe pelu awon ti ko gboran nigbati o tewo gba awon ami ni alaafia then now we find the mention of a canaanite ni lati gbe daruko ara kenani kan an alien to the commonwealth of israel alejo ati ajeji si afani awon olo to israel a stranger from the covenant of promise o je ajeji si awon ileri majemu even though she was a pagan she believed in god bi o le je pe te fe ri ni sugbon o gba olorun gbo remember once again faith come by hearing hearing by the word of god ro ti le kan si o wi pe nipa gbigbo ni igbagbo tin wa ti nipa gbigbo oro olorun she had heard of the miraculous wonders that god did for the children of israel o ti gbo nipa awon ise ami ati ise iyanu ti olorun se fun awon mo israel she be meditating upon those words o ti sasaro lori awon oro na eventually when she had the opportunity to make a confession of that faith she confessed that she believed in god o gbo si se ti o ni afa lati jewo iru igbagbo na o je wa igbagbo e pe o n gba olorun she happened to be the only one in jericho at that time that confessed that she believed in the god of israel o ni kan soso o ni arika ni pa re laarin awon ara jericho e pe o n lo gba olorun alaye go maybe you have a pagan idolatrous background boya lati idile aborisa ni won ti jade wa maybe you are the only one in your family that have accepted that has accepted the word of god boya iwo ni kan soso ninu iran yi o n lo ti gba olorun gbo maybe there is even destruction mark now for the people of your family just like the people of Jericho boya ati pete idajo olorun ati iparo lori awon ebi re gege bo se ri lori awon ara Jericho maybe there is a curse upon that family just like there was a curse upon Jericho boya egu kan wa to wa lori ebi yi to so se ire to wa lori awon ara Jericho if you are a woman like Rehab if you are a man wanting to believe like Rehab you can single yourself out and all the negative things that you shall have come upon Jericho will not come upon you. Bi o ba wa je okunrin tabi o je obirin gege bi Rahabu yi, iwo fun ra la re le da yo foda la re awon eniya yi to fi je pe isele ibi oni le sele si won la re. That as we read the story of Rahab. Ki isele eni kan ba tin ka nipa ito Rahabu. She became the source of salvation for even her own people. O gan fun re wa di orisun igbala fun awon eniya re. You may be the only one now that hears that knows the gospel. O le je pe iwo ni kan so lo mo irere nu awon eniya. But if you will believe like Rahab believe the Lord, you can become the source of salvation and the source of deliverance and the source of protection for your whole family ti won na ba wa le gbagbo gege bi rabu ti gbagbo yi o le di orisun igbala o le di orisun ida bobo ati ida nde fun awon eniyan re the major thing we have learned in point number 1 is the obedience of faith as well as believing the lord implicitly koko o nti a ri gba mu ti a si ri keko ninu re ninu koko akoko ni wi pe won je olugboran si olorun won si ni igbagbo ti o pe yo ninu olorun point number 2 is adding to that is talking about the confession of your mouth koko keji wa fi nku eleyi yen ni jewo enu ara re it is your confession that will show whether you have faith in god or you do not have faith in god i jewo enu ara re ni yo fi han boyo ni gbagbo ninu olorun abo re remember this rehab we are talking about oran ti rehab ta so ro npa e she had been a harlot a prostitute pa saga ni she won it tell her life was very dirty before igbe aye re buru ja e tele tele she didn't care for anything you call religion ko si ni nkan kan se pelu esin ni ja she was in a pagan city there a 
people have been coming. In their discussion, they had been talking about the things happening among the children of Israel who were still in the wilderness, who were marching towards Jericho. And as she was listening to them, there was something telling her in her heart that even though I am bad, even though I am dirty, even though I am immoral, I may be able to find mercy in the hand of this God of Israel. And when the opportunity came to believe in the Lord, she held on to that faith. Maybe you have been a sinner too. A pagan idol worshipper. Immoral and corrupt. But when the chance comes to you to hold on to the faith in God, you will believe God. God will take you from the dungeon, the deepest dungeon, and take you to the highest height. Look at Joshua chapter 2. Look at verse 1. And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go build the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an Adlock's house named Rahab and lodged there. Joshua, Oma Nuni, see Rock, or Meji, Lati Shitimu, your Lord Shiam and Ami, we pay a long way, and now, as Jericho, once it long, once it daily, Pasha, Katia, and Queen Rabu, once it won a bed. I need to just say, in passing, they were not looking for prostitutes. They had never been to that place before. And when they got to that place, there was a house, and the nearest house to them, and God just directed them, and they entered into that place, like, you know, you get into a city, there is an hotel there, and you don't have accommodation, and you just get in there. They were not looking for prostitutes. They were not looking for sin to commit. Now let's look at her confession. He before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land. She had heard of the promise, the covenant that was made unto Abraham. He said, she said, I know the Lord has given you the land. If you are going to receive the fulfillment of the promise of God, you must voice out. You must say, out the promise of God. I know the Lord has given the land. You look at the promise of God, you put words into it, and you put sound into it, you voice it out, you confess it. And that your terror is falling upon us. And that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. That miracle had taken place 40 years before this time. She was hanging her face on the testimony of what happened 40 years ago. If you are going to receive the fulfillment of the promises of God, you must believe the testimony. But you know there are some people who will tell them a testimony. And they say that one took place four years ago now. And the one you are telling me now, since four years ago that happened, you want me to believe God because of a four years ago testimony. Testimony. If you can tell me testimony of what happened yesterday, this yesterday, if you want me to believe God, tell me what happened yesterday. Forget about the one that happened four years ago. So, she had this testimony that God had divided the Red Sea before the children of Israel 40 years ago. She was still believing. 
In verse 11, and as soon as we had these things, the heart, the, the heart for the people melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in the earth beneath. Now can you see here she was confessing that this God is the only true God. She had abandoned the idols of her own land. She knew that this was the true God, the God of heaven and the God on earth. Now she also wanted mercy. She wanted salvation. She wanted to become part of the people of God. If it's not enough to know that God is a good God, God is a great God, God is a powerful God, you must have a desire to belong to that God. Now, therefore, verse 12, I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that he will show kindness unto my farm, unto my father's house, and give me a true token, a true sign. She desired the mercy of the Lord. She desired. She desired also the salvation of the Lord. And eventually she got that salvation. If you will desire the salvation of the Lord, the mercy of the Lord, and the deliverance of the Lord that way, you will have it in Jesus' name. So it is very remarkable. When the children of Israel eventually came and they went around Jericho and the walls of Jericho fell down, her own house was intact, protected by the Almighty God. In Joshua chapter 6 verse 22. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the hall of house and bring her hands, uh, bring her hands, uh, the bring out this the woman and all that she has as she swear unto her. And so she was saved. Her family was saved. And there is something very remarkable. And she came into the family, into the household of Israel. Her life became clean. And they have seen how the conviction of sin will grip a man and you will preach for only 10 minutes and that person will begin to shake, will begin to tremble, will be weeping, Oh God have mercy upon me, I'm a sinner. And she wasn't married before. You know the kind of life she had been living. Eventually she even got married in Israel. And the Lord so worked it out. She became one of the great 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 grandmothers of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you see the reward of faith. That's what we have in Matthew chapter 1. As you look at the generations that is at the family's genealogy and uh, how Jesus came into this world, you will see the name of Rahab there. Matthew chapter 1 from verse 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, Isaac begat Jacob, Jacob begat Judas, and his brethren. Abraham be Saki, Saki, see, be Jacob, Jacob, see, be Judah, Tawara, Kulere. And Judah begat Phares, and Sarah, of Tama, and Phares begat Esrom, and Esrom begat Aram. Judah, see, be Phares, at Tisara, T Tamari, Phares, see, be Esrom, Esrom, see, be Aram. And Aram begat Aminada, and Aminada begat Nashon, and Nashon begat Salmon. Aram, see, be Amnadabu, Amnadabu, see, be Nashoni, Nashoni, see, be Salmon. Salmon begat Boaz of Rehab. 
Salmon is it? Boaz is it? And Boaz begat Obed of Ruth. Boaz is it? Obed is it? And Obed begat Jesse. Obed is it? Be Jesse. And Jesse begat David the king. Jesse is it? Be David the king. And you will see as you go down the lineage in which Jesus Christ came. If you will believe God tonight, great things will be recorded about your name as well in Jesus' name. See, we are not here to talk about Bonnie and Shale. Oh, we are Kashela, Kolo, Kolo, Kolo. We see something remarkable about her. At one point, she was a woman. That is a confession of faith. She accepted the testimony she had to be true. Oh, by the way, she was a woman. She exalted the God of Israel. Oh, by the way, she was a woman. She acknowledged God as the God of heaven and the God of the earth. Oh, my God. She expressed certainty, conviction, assurance. She was sure that the Lord had given the land of Canaan to the children of Israel. And her faith perceived something of the infinite mercy of God. She believed God and came into the household of faith. Our confession is very important. What we receive from the Lord will depend upon our confession because our confession reveals our faith. Uh, you know, if you are even going to be saved, you need to have a confession of faith. In Romans chapter 10, reading from verse uh, 9, that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou Shall be saved. After you have become a believer, you must keep on that confession of faith. To know that God will keep you to the very end. In Second Timothy chapter one verse twelve. Timothy For the which cause I also suffered these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know this is a confession of Paul the apostle. I know that I know whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Ni tori di e ti e mi se ngi ya wa i pe lo suba oju ko ti mi ni tori ti e mi ma i ya wa i bagbo Paul ni e oni tori pe mi ma ni ti e mi bagbo. In Hebrews chapter 11, verses 30 and 31, the Bible says, "There are some definite things for us, brothers and sisters, to look into and to pray that God will write these things upon our hearts and make us to act like the people here, like they acted." I want to come to share part of it. We are from a local church. No, we are not in the man. 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 And there are some things you need to note about faith. Somebody has put it this way. It said there are four hours related with faith. He said, number one, there is a faith that receives. Number two, there is a faith that reckons. Number three, there is a faith that risks. Number four, there is a faith that rests. As we look at the verses we have studied today, there is a faith that comes to God empty-handed, only looking at the promised land of Pharaoh, and did it have any weapon? Did it have anything? And yet receives victory because of the faith that receives. Nothing in my hand I bring. I come to Christ to receive. That's how you come to the Lord. You come empty-handed. You do not have anything you are going to give. You only come with the hand of faith, stretch out, wanting to receive from the Lord. And you see these children of Israel, their fathers and mothers. 
had died in the wilderness. Even Moses had been told to climb up to the mountain and look at the promised land, and he had not received. And here Joshua and the children of Israel just came to the Lord. And he came with a faith that will receive. Then number two, there's a faith that reckons. Counting on the faithfulness of God. Counting on the timetable of God. Counting on the ability of God. Reckoning that God has said he wants to do it and this is the time God is going to do it. I reckon it done. I know it's going to be done. What's that the kind of faith they manifested as they went around Jericho? Reckoning that God said we should go around and he said when we shout the Jericho walls will fall down. It appeared unreasonable. It appeared childish. But we reckon it that God who said it, he knows what he's saying. We're going to do what he said. We reckon it will be done. We actually, it was very risky. Because you see, as those children of Israel were moving around, the people inside the city they knew that they were present outside the wall. And the disciples they could have done. They forget their armed men and get on top of the wall. And the wall was so high that they couldn't throw stones at them to reach them at the top. But it was easy for somebody on the top to throw down something on them to shoot at them shoot arrows or whatever and disperse them. It was very, very risky for those children of Israel just moving around Jericho quietly. And they were commanded not to say anything, not to do anything, not to throw any stones, not to fight at all. Wasn't that risky in the presence of your enemy to keep quiet, not to act, not to do anything, not to fight for yourself? There is a face that risks. And he moves out and the command of the Lord. I will not even do anything at all. And your enemy will think that you are weak. The enemy must have been looking at them from the top of the wall. And they had no arrows in their hands. They had no spears in their hands. They must have sent information back to the city. And those people said there is nothing to fear. These are just foolish people, unintelligent people, illiterate people. The slaves from Egypt that are going out, uh, come and come and look. There's no danger. They cannot do anything. They don't even have anything at hand. No sling, no stone, no spear, nothing. Come and look at them. And the people looked at them and quietly, sluggishly, like uh, humble, uh, sanctified people that uh, they have got madness with their religion. They will not even push. Uh, look at can this one fight at all? Can this one do anything? Very risky for them. There is a faith that risks. That's what they are thinking. They say, uh, we even hear of churches that have holy water. Those other people, they don't have holy water. They don't have olive oil. They don't read the Psalms seven times. They don't do anything. All those uh, deeper life do, they go to their church. They say, in Jesus, and that's all they do. They think we are fully. They say, that is very risky. And we are the people going to defeat Jericho. And then there's a faith that rests. Because they went around that Jericho wall, they were rest assured. They said, only one week we are going to enter in. It will not be long. We're going to possess the promise that had been made unto Abraham that they had been talking about, that Isaac talked about, that Jacob talked about, that Moses preached about. We 
year, that generation, one week only we are going to get into the land of rest. You see, if you have that kind of faith, the faith that receives, the faith that reckons, the faith that reads, the faith that rests, it may not be up to one week, you will end time. Can you see as you look at all these things that we have read today? Very quickly, before we pray, look at seven things. Number one is the obedience of faith. The Lord gave them instruction. And I told you over and over in this study, they obeyed the Lord implicitly. But you, the discipline of faith. The discipline went to talk and went not to talk. When you come to the Lord, when you come in the gathering of the people of God like this, we pray, we claim the promises of God. When you go back home, you need the discipline of faith to know when to keep quiet and to know when to talk. And the doctors might, um, you know, if you don't see the doctor, the doctor may get so concerned, I even come to see you. He said, why do you need to come back? This one is very dangerous. This one is going to take your life. I am telling you, don't bring church matter into this matter now. We are talking from medical experience. The eating will claim your life. You need the discipline of faith. Does the Lord tell you to talk to him? Or does the Lord just want you to keep quiet? I say thank you very much. I'll settle it with the Lord. No way to talk, no way not to talk. Number three, the patience of faith. The first day they went around, nothing shook, nothing moved, nothing fell. The second day they went around, nothing budged. The third day they went around, there was no sign. And the Monday they went around, there wasn't any sign of even partial victory until the very seventh day. Let's think about this thing now. All those children of Israel moving around and they shouted and the walls fell and, and the wall was very, very high and the wall did not fall upon any little child in Israel. We did not make it. There was no accident at all. It fell in, it fell to destroy the unbelievers inside. And our God is mighty. Our God is powerful. Number four, there is the expectation of faith. Every time they moved around, they were expecting this in, on the seventh day, this thing is going to fall. Do you have that expectation of faith? That at the end of your prayer, after that mention of the name of Jesus, this problem is going to be solved. This mountain is going to move. This wall is going to fall. This sickness is going to go away. This barrenness must vanish away. This oppression of the devil, it must go. This hardness of heart must be uprooted. This Christian experience, I'm going to have it. That great expectation of faith. Number five, the basis of their faith. For faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. The basis of their faith was what Joshua told them from the Lord. It was the word of the Lord. Heaven and earth may pass away. A church or a teacher in the word of God will never pass away. Number six, the confession of faith. And you see that in their heart. I know that the Lord has given you the land. She didn't confess the tradition of her people. She didn't confess the superstition of Jericho. She said she knew the God of heaven has given the land. Number seven, the effect and the reward of faith. What's the effect? What God said will happen actually happened. Jericho fell. I said Jericho fell. And Rahab was saved. 
you are delivered tonight you will be saved tonight you will be healed if you are sick all the walls of Jericho around you they must fall down in Jesus name let me just read some scriptures to you if you will believe the word of God all these characteristics of faith will be fulfilled in your life in Mark chapter 11 verse 24 Mark chapter 11 verse 24 you are storing it into your heart as you are hearing the word of God therefore I say unto you what thing soever whatever it is ye desire when ye pray believe that ye shall receive them and ye shall have them in Romans chapter 4 reading from verse 19 and be not weak in faith he considered not a somebody now dead are you looking at your body why are you looking at your body and they said I have this they said I have that are you concerned about what they said of what God has said then he said in verse 20 he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief and was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded are you fully persuaded are you fully persuaded that what God has promised he was able to perform he will do it in Isaiah chapter 28 Isaiah chapter 28 reading from verse 16 therefore thus says the Lord God behold I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone a tried stone precious cornerstone a sure foundation he that believeth shall not make haste. He that believeth shall not make haste. In John chapter 11 verse 40. John chapter 11 reading from verse 40. And I'm reading from verse 39. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. What's the thing that is hindering your Lazarus from coming out of the grave? What's the thing that is hindering your problem to flee away. What's the thing that is holding that problem there, keeping that problem there? The Lord is telling you tonight, take care away the soul. Matter, the sister of him that was dead said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinkers. No more solution. It's too late now. A man is stinking already. The body is decomposed already. Already. Jesus, can't you, can't you sense the smell yourself? We have been there four days. Jesus says unto her, Said not I unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. If you believe, you will see the glory of God. It's now time for the Jericho world to fall. It's time now for you to have your blessing. It's time now for you to take away the soul. It's time for you to enter to the land of promise. It's time for you to go around that Jericho wall, see your faith seven times, and that thing will fall down. It's time for you to believe the Lord. Because with God all things are possible. No negative thoughts, no unbelieving thoughts, no tears in your eyes, no regret in your life, no sorrow in your heart, no unbelief in your heart we are serving a living God a mighty God a powerful God Jericho walls are still falling down Jericho is still being divided impossibilities are still becoming possible the Lord is still working in a mighty way he is a God that cannot fail he is a God that heals the sea he is a God that delivers the oppressed he is a God that provides for the needy he is a God that makes the Jericho walls to fall down it is the God that pulls down the strongholds. It is the God that takes away all the attacks and afflictions of the devil. It is the God that makes the devil to come to shame. 
is the God that lifts up his children. Is the God that promotes the people that believe. Is the God that will not allow you to come to shame. Is the God that will raise up Lazarus from the dead. Is the God that will provide manna in the wilderness. Is the God that will give us water out of the world. Is the God with nothing, nothing shall be impossible. Is the God that makes the Jericho walls to fall down. Is the God that will the armies of your enemy. Is the God that will smile upon you and solve your problems. He is the God that will protect you from the idolatrous family and give you a place among the children of Israel. He is the God that will show mercy unto you. He is the God that will make you to forget all your problems. He is the God that will put that in your mouth. He is the God that will crush all the parts of the enemy. He is the God that will still alive and active. He is the God that is dynamic. He is the God that will be impossible. Oh Lord God of heaven, you are the creator of the heavens and the earth. Is there anything too hard for you? No, there is nothing too hard for our God. We see now all things are possible. We think nothing shall be impossible. Why don't you believe God? Why don't you obey God? Is it a family problem? Is it a personal problem? Is it a problem in your place of work? Is it a curse? Is it something the devil has put upon you? Is it a stronghold of the enemy? Why don't you come with faith? Why don't you come with faith? It shall be done. It shall be done. It shall be done. Faith will laugh at impossibilities. Faith will laugh at impossibilities. Faith will laugh at impossibilities. And faith will say, it is done. He did not stagger because of unbelief. He staggered not because of unbelief. He was strong in faith, giving glory. Glory unto God. Jericho walls will fall down. The armies of the enemy will be defeated. Satan and all the sages are going to be defeated in your life. Believe. 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 Only believe. Yours is the victory. Yours is the victory. The power of the Lord will work in your life. The protection of the Lord will work in your life. The provision of the Lord will be given unto you. The promises of God are yes and amen. You will not come to shame. You will not come to shame. You will not come to shame. Only Jericho will, be, will come to shame. Only the enemies will come to shame. Only the followers of Satan will come to shame. Only the people that are looking for your downfall will come to shame. You will not be defeated. You will not come to shame. The Lord is on your side. Only believe. Only believe. Only believe. There is a faith that receives. There is a faith that welcomes. There is a faith that breathes. There is a faith that rests in the Lord. Rest in the Lord, it shall be done. Rest in the Lord, it shall be done. Rest in the Lord, it shall be done. Rest in the Lord, it shall be done.
If you have not been born again, give yourself to the Lord and be born again. After that, victory is sure. If you have been like Rahab, you have not been born again, give your life to the Lord and be born again. After that, victory is definite. If you are a stranger to the commonwealth of Israel, an alien coming from a pagan background, a sinful background, give yourself to the Lord and be born again. After that, the enemy is defeated. Believers, there is nothing to fear. Nothing in the sea, nothing in the sky, nothing on the land, nothing to fear. Jericho is not a match to the power of God. Jericho, the power of God will bring the Jericho walls down. We are afraid to obey the Lord and believe the Lord, it shall be done. He will bless you. You will enter into the land of praise. You will enter into the land of promise. Don't talk to the devil, talk to God. Don't talk with the enemies, talk to God. No way to keep quiet and no way to talk. No way to be quiet and no way to shout. Don't look at the wall, look at your God. Don't look at the problem, look at your God. Don't mama, don't complain. Don't describe the wall, look at your God. Don't talk about poverty, look at your God. No food, no clothing, no material thing, no money. Don't talk, don't talk, look at your God. Don't mama like they did in the wilderness. Don't complain that they live in the wilderness. Don't find fault of the church like they did in the wilderness. Don't accuse anyone that they did in the wilderness. No way to keep quiet and move around Jericho and see the power of God breaking the Jericho walls now. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. At the time of Joshua, Joshua believed the Lord. And all the children of Israel, they united with Joshua, they believed the Lord together. And in unity of faith tonight, we can bring all these Jericho walls now. Look at your God tonight and see how big your God is. That woman, the testimony of 40 years, she believed the testimony of 40 years. You are testimonies that are not yet 40 years old. You are testimonies of last week, testimonies of last month, testimonies of last December, testimonies of hours of old, testimony of the revival hours. Ah, if that woman could believe the testimony of 40 years and that victory in her life, how about you today? You have no problem, only believe. You have no problem, only believe. You have no problem, only believe. Tonight, your Jericho walls will fall. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We are believing God together tonight. No Jericho wall will stand before you. No barrier will stand before you. No superstitious power will stand before you. 
we are the victorious people. When we get to the promised land, this is now the point of entry. Something definite is going to happen in your life. You are going to leave the wilderness behind you. And you are going to move into the land of promise tonight. Just lay your hand upon yourself as we get the victory together. Almighty God, we thank you tonight. We bless your name because you are a great God. We know you are a mighty God. The truth of the heavens and the earth. With you all things are possible. We have been challenged by the attitude of the children of Israel in the, at, the time of, at the time of Joshua. We have seen the pattern of victory. And we come for our own victory tonight. Oh Lord, I pray for all your children here tonight. Every Jericho wall before them, I command you fall down in Jesus' name. Hindrances against the promises of God. That have not allowed these children of God to enter in victoriously into the accomplishment of all the promises of God. You Jericho walls before the people of God, I command you, collapse and fall down in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that every stronghold of the enemy, every stronghold of the abalis, every stronghold of the village, every stronghold of evil, power, evil spirit, I command them right now, be pulled down in Jesus' name. The stronghold of fear, the stronghold of unbelief, I command you be pulled down in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray, whatever blessings you have promised your children, and the walls of Jericho have been hindering them to enter in. Now that the Jericho walls are falling, I pray, O oh Lord, you fill their lives with your blessing in Jesus' name. And I pray for those who need to be born again. I pray that as they confess and forsake their sins, I pray, Lord, forgive them and make them children of God. Save them, give them their chance of salvation in Jesus' name. For your children, I pray that any infirmity upon them, any kind of deformity, any kind of sickness, I pray you touch them now. Remove those things that have been stubbornly waiting there, remaining there after fasting and praying, and that thing that will refuse to go today, today, remove it in Jesus' name. That person that has the certificate and everything, but there is no job and you are begging and living from hand to mouth, I command that a Jericho wall of poverty to live your life now. And I pray for the provision of the Lord to enter into your life from this very moment in Jesus' name. The harassment of the devil in the life of that individual, as if you don't know yourself, you uh, want to scatter your brain, scatter your life, and just make you a useless uh, fellow. I command that that hand of the devil, that affliction of the enemy, will live your life now, be delivered in Jesus' name. The fellow that has a terrible fear is as if the spirit of death is following you. you. You'll be feeling that you are going to die. You are going to die. That spirit of death, I rebuke you. And I command you, leave this believer and leave this child of God. You child of God, I declare that you are free from tonight in Jesus' name. 
that one that has a complication of heart problem, heart failure, they say that any time if you are not careful, if you are suddenly surprised by noise, or if you are suddenly taken with something, your heart may just fall down, fall out, and you just fall down and die. That's the infirmity in the heart. I command right now, you have no right to take the life of this individual. Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for that family surrounded by powers of darkness, powers of evil, and they are waging war against you. They won't allow you to sleep at night. Uh, things will be running about and all that, and they are just troubling you, and you are wondering whether to pack out of this place and go to the other place, and then you had another information and dream that even if you go, they are going to follow you. You evil personality wanting to just ruin and wreck this family, I command you, you have no right there anymore now. Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, all the problems that these are your people have been struggling with and struggling with. I pray that this stronghold, this uh, Jericho one, fall down in their lives tonight in Jesus' name. Victoriously let every brother, every sister march in into the land of promise. Give them their right in Jesus' name. As they shout the shout of joy, the shout of praise, the shout of commendation unto the Lord. Knowing that your promises have been fulfilled, and you have their lives, they will move from victory unto victory. They will move from one level of success to another in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, this will be a new generation. For the people that will be testing the power of God every time. And we will never go back to the wilderness experience in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And when the people shouted, the walls came down. Why don't you praise the Lord? 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 Why don't you thank the Lord? Your walls are gone. Your problems are gone. You are entering into a new era, into a new time. You are entering to the land of promise. Never, never to go back to the wilderness experience. 